share the peace of God with one another as a sign of our reconciliation and unity in the Spirit.
And at this time, we'll actually invite the kids. If you're here, you can come on up and sit a little closer, just so you can see things. We begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord said in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful, and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How are you made? How are you made? Excellent. Wyatt William received the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ crucified. Kaylee Ann received the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet, according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea. You led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Wyatt and Kaylee according to your boundless mercy and bless them with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood, all sin in them which has been inherited from Adam and which they themselves have committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that they be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, they would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter. He took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we do have a family prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. And so, as you now are going to be joining our family, we gift this prayer to you 
and we pray all together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. So, we have some questions now. So, we'll ask why and Kaylee these questions, along with her dad and, and the whole congregation. And you can respond in faith with a simple yes. Wyatt, Kaylee, do you renounce the devil? Yes. yes. Do you renounce all his works? Yes. yes. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes. You believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes. Why, Kaylee, do you desire to be baptized? Yes. you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace and life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> so receive this little white garment to show that you have been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that now covers all your sin. So shall you stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ. To receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Why I receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ, and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy, and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. Switch to the next slide. And let's speak this all together, both sections. The, the italicized and the bold. In holy baptism, 
God the Father has made you members of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and heirs with us of all the treasures of heaven, in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother and sister in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praise of him all this out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Before we pray, I've got a couple more gifts for you. <coughs> Why, here's a certificate to remind you of this day that you are baptized into Jesus. And a book, a comic book Bible. Hopefully that's something that can intrigue you as you continue to learn these stories. I'll give that to your dad. Same for you. A certificate to remind you of this day and that you are now a child. A little Bible story for bedtime. Time to smuggle with dad and read more books of Jesus' great love. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Wyatt and Haley the new birth and holy baptism and made them members of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and heirs of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as they have now become your children, you would keep them in their baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure they may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord and giver of life, Look with kindness upon the father and mother of this ch these children, and upon all our parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their baptism, that they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, since you govern and sanctify the whole Christian church by your Holy Spirit, hear our prayers for all her members, and mercifully granted by your grace, we may serve you in true faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Wyatt and Haley, peace be with you. Close the candle, and you can return to your seat. And the kids can return to your seat. All right. I invite the whole congregation to stand. So we continue with confession and absolution, resting more and more in Jesus' forgiveness for us. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may make the light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Only a handful of flour in a jar, 
and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Hebrews 9, verses 24 through 28. For Christ has entered, not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true thing, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly, as the high priest enters the holy places every year, with blood not his own. For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all, at the end of all ages, to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The children can get their exercise and come back up for the reading of the Holy Gospel. And the congregation stand as you're able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Our gospel reading this morning comes from St. Mark, the 12th chapter. In his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts, who devour widows' houses and, for a pretense, make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all that she had to live on. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. All right, good morning. Did you guys see what happened here earlier with Wyatt and Kaylee? Yeah. What happened? They got baptized. You guys feel any different? No? Yeah, I didn't find that either. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, people say that. You don't really feel any different, but there's actually something really amazing that's changed. All of your sins have been washed away forever. All the bad that you've ever done and will ever do in your life, it's been forgiven. You have a place in heaven with God. That's pretty amazing. That's worth remembering. 
And did you guys catch? I came up to a wild game and I did something. Did you see? Before the water came up, I, I went and I did this. I put the sign of the cross on their forehead and on their heart to mark them as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. And there's something that we can do to help us remember that we are marked as God's children in baptism. Have you ever seen people cross themselves? Okay, follow me. Take your hand, go like this. Put the fingers together like this. And then you can say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, because that's the name that you guys were just baptized into. You were joined to God, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, like Jesus commanded. And so you can cross yourself and say that, or you can kind of whisper it to yourself quietly and remember that you are baptized. You're marked with Jesus. Then you're a kid of the kingdom. Kid of the kingdom. You got a king of <laughs> That's our song. Do you remember this one? So this Kids of the Kingdom song, this is a fun one, where we say, we love Jesus, and then we say, we love the Lord, and then we say, my name is, and then you, we all shout our names at the same time, so just as big, blah, names, but we're all kids of the kingdom of Jesus. Okay, so let's sing. The kingdom, that's what we are, kids of the kingdom, that's what we are. Holy 
Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Right. You guys can take a candy. The congregation may be seated. Oh, yeah. Take a candy, and then you guys can head to the back room. There's some toys here this week. You can head to the back for some Sunday school. Just one. Okay, and we'll get started with our next song here while we're finishing up with the kids. <laughs>
What else did you remember from last night? Yeah, that's right. Those who died in faith, they're alive in Christ. They join with us when we worship, as we were singing, as we commune, as we live. Anybody remember? Ah, uh aha. -huh. You're pointing up. The ceiling tiles. The ceiling tiles. <laughs> right? They kind of look like what? Like stone, bricks, all joined together. And we can look up and remember the saints that are in heaven with our Lord. Does anybody remember? Did you mark one? And do you remember where it is? Yeah, you got it. Use the, the ceiling fan or the lights to kind of mark like a tree <laughs> where it is. Okay. Okay. All because of Jesus. That's why we have this hope. Seeing them again. Being joined with them now. Something's changed in the last couple weeks since Halloween. We've moved from orange and black to a new color that you see popping up all around. What color am I talking about? Red. Red. Ooh. Oh, you're on top of things. So what? Uh, what's been popping up everywhere? Poppy. 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 Right. Yeah. And why? Murder. Now you just went ahead and spoiled the sermon. <laughs> okay, well, yes. That's a good guess, anyway. Um, yes, poppies. They help us to remember, right? They help us remember something. What do they help us remember? Right. The end of the war. They also help us remember something very important. That someone died for you. Right? These poppies, they, they grew in Flanders Field, right? Where people died. Now, war isn't a good thing, right? So don't, get, don't hear me wrong when I, when I say what I'm about to say, but the best thing, the highest value of war is where someone lays down their life for their neighbor to defend them, to keep them safe. When they fulfill the fifth commandment by protecting their neighbor and their body, now, this past week in adult confirmation, some wisecracker said, well, isn't everybody our neighbor? <laughs> and yes, it's true. Everybody is our neighbor. And so it seems a bit wrong to be hurting our neighbor to protect a neighbor. But we're called by God to be peacekeepers, to defend somebody if they're being attacked, to keep them safe. And that's what happened in the past. Somebody died defending you, keeping you safe. These poppies help us remember that fact. Now, we don't have a, a poppy for baptism, do we? No. But we do have what I taught the kids earlier. We have this living mark, this gesture that we can do. We cross ourselves in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to remind us that we are marked by Christ the crucified. We don't see that. People around us don't see that mark on us all the time unless we are actively marking ourselves. But the Father in heaven, he looks down at us and he sees that mark on us at all times. He looks down and goes, ah, that is my child. I am marked. They're mine. They're part of my family. Now with war, and the reason why we remember with these poppies, there was a few things that were being threatened to be taken from us 
that we have because somebody gave up their life. We have a home. And that was potentially under threat with war. That your home would be taken away from you. We have family. That was also under threat. As war has a bad habit of taking away those that we love. Whether it's by fighting in the war or by being separated and taken away from them in the fight. And we are under threat of losing our peace, of being under oppression, or having all this chaos in our lives. And so this poppy reminds us that we have a home, we have family, we have peace because someone died for us. And the exact same thing is true for us, both baptism too. Baptism, it reminds us that someone died for you. That Jesus died for you. And because of that, we have these things as well. Because Jesus died for us, we have a home, we have a family, and we have peace. And we have that in kind of two parts. We have that now, those things, but we'll also have them to a greater degree in the future. It hasn't fully happened yet. For example, home. As we live on this earth, as baptized children, we never know what might happen to us. We don't know what happened to our life circumstance or if we'll be hit by another war. We might find ourselves without a home on the streets. But through baptism, through what Jesus has done for us, we always have a home in his house. God's house is always a home for us. Where our Father speaks to us, where he gives us his gifts, and where we are gathered together with brothers and sisters. We always have a home. And in that home, of course, we have brothers and sisters. We have family. No matter what happens in this life, no matter if you have a great family, that gets along and you love so dearly, I feel blessed to say about mine. Whether your family is pretty broken, you don't get along with them. If things are bad, they haven't been good for a long time. No matter what your family situation looks like, you have a family here in the church. Father has gathered us together in this, this beautiful community. And, well, we don't always get along, but we do have a sense of peace as well. Because Jesus died for us, the sins that we've committed that plague us, we can know they are forgiven. And we can have peace in our own hearts, about our own actions and our own future. And we can have peace with one another too. Peace knowing that we're freely forgiven and we can freely forgive our brothers and sisters and those around us. When someone hurts you, you can look at them and know that Christ has already died for that sin. So you can apply that forgiveness he's already bought and paid for to them. We can have peace. Now, those things are all wonderful right now. But there's even more coming. More that God has promised us. Because, well, if we're honest, we don't have perfect peace in the church. 
even here at Bethany. It's not perfect peace that God has promised to give us one day. For Christians all over the world, there's not perfect peace. As we've got, as the one hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel says, uh, when one day he bids all our sad divisions would cease. We have these sad divisions, these misunderstandings about who God is and what his love for us means. How do we get that? We all kind of mourn not having that peace and unity with one another. God has promised it will come one day. That every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That we'll all finally know the truth and be at peace with one another. All divisions put to an end. Singing kumbaya around the campfire, so to speak. And we know that we have family right here on earth, but there is that family that we're missing. It's up there. That we're separated from because of death. Or that family that's yet to be born, that we haven't met and we never will because of death. We're separated from them now, but because Jesus died for us, we will be joined with them again. We'll have not just our family here, but the family before and after to be with, to live with, to hug with, to talk with. I'm looking forward to talking with Adam. That's going to be amazing, right? Hearing about what happened right at the very beginning. I'm sure some people want to give him a tongue lashing about, you know, eating the fruit and all that, but it would just be amazing to hear that history and how he experienced God's goodness. We'll have that. We have a home now here in the church, receiving God's gifts with his family, but we will have a home in heaven, won't we? That's yet to come. And we have an even greater hope of resurrection to eternal life where we'll be raised in our physical bodies to live together with all those who have gone before and all of them to come. To live on this earth in a perfect home. We've got some amazing gifts. All because someone died for Now Jesus, he gave up his life. He gave up everything he had on this earth for you and me. And we see little glimmers of that in our readings this morning. See that widow in Zarephath? Well, God had caused a big drought to happen. And that's why she was about to go eat the last of her flour and oil and then die. There's no more food. The end was near. And she, at Elijah's request, was willing to give up the last of her food and give him some. In faith, to give up everything that she had. But yet she had the promise. God's word said that that oil would run out and the flour wouldn't be spent. And God provided a miracle of life in the face of death. Just like he did for Wyatt and Haley. A miracle of eternal life in the face of death in this world. And then of course we have our gospel reading where, where Jesus commends that widow for putting in the last of her money, all that she had to live on. She gave it to God. Like Christ would give his whole life for you and me. That widow in the New Testament would have known about this story of the widow of Zarephath and trusted that God would have provided. She would have known the story in Ezekiel of the Valley of Dry Bones that even if we die, God can raise us back up to give us his promises. Put us in the promised land. Have us live forever once again. Now it's all because of that one sacrifice for you. Hebrews talks about it as the one sacrifice for all. We have soldiers who give their life to keep us safe. 
But Jesus died perfect death to give you eternal life. To give you hope of all these amazing things to come. Of not just a temporary home or family or peace, but an eternal, lasting home, family. May that peace from God, which surpasses all understanding, may it keep and guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We continue now by taking a moment to receive the offering in response to hearing God's good word of love for us. As we sing together also, forever. Not for forever, but the song called forever. We'll see it in a second. We'll get this thing in forever. It'll come. <laughs>
Let us come before our Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, asking Him to grant every good gift to us and all who are in need. That He would graciously keep us in His divine word and send out faithful laborers into His harvest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That he would bestow his Holy Spirit on all preachers and ministers of his church, that they may proclaim and teach the word purely and rightly, and be examples of godly living. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That he would mercifully preserve us from all false doctrine, and curb and restrain all error. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That he would deliver us from all hypocrisy and pretending, granting us genuine faith, joyful living, and cheerful giving. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That he would mercifully assist all our sisters and brothers who are assaulted for Christ. That they would remain steadfast in true faith with patience. And according to his will, that the persecution may end or be lightened. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That he would open the door for his gospel to be preached in every place. And that he would overthrow all that opposes its spread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That he would hold in his gracious protection all the leaders of our nation and province, preserving them from all evil, and blessing them in, in body and soul, as well as those, of those leaders of other countries in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That he would comfort, keep, and assist all the afflicted and troubled the sick, and especially Kathy's nephew, as he struggles with health issues and waits for appointments with specialists. For Kathy's daughter, recovering from injuries from a fall. For Kathy's granddaughter, as she continues to heal from her surgery and deal with her long COVID health condition. For Eugene, clean as he regains his health, that our Lord would give him the strength he needs and relief from the pain. For Andy Castle, who has an infection in his arm, that that would be healed soon. And for Dave and all who are under a cloud of dark depression, that the Lord of light would shine upon them and give them and for all who have asked for our prayer, all women with child, all young children, the mourning, and those in any need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That he would graciously defend us from all adversity and evil, and that he would preserve and bless the fruits of the field, and give us grace to enjoy them in peace and health with thankful hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we would be made ready to receive the Holy Sacrament together in true, genuine faith and repentance with the body and blood of Christ, which were once offered to bear the sins of many, May now bring us forgiveness and strengthen us to live according to God's will, forgiving our enemies, loving our neighbors, and doing good to all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That he would strengthen the baptized, and especially the newly baptized, in their life of faith, granting them all that they need in this life, and resting in the promise of their needs for the life to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may join the faithful departed and be brought with them to the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
all these things and whatever else you know us to need. Grant us, kind Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we're going to do the Lord's Prayer again today in our service. Uh, as a way to help remember the amazing gifts that God has given us. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We close with our final song, All the People Said Amen. Please be seated.
Uh, yeah, a couple of quick things. Thursday is Keenagers. We're going to be going to the Hague Brown House. If you've always wondered who is this guy, Hague Brown, we're going to find out on Thursday. Afterwards, we'll have lunch at the Ideal Cafe. It isn't great, but it's ideal, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, sign up sheet downstairs. Uh, space is limited, so if you want to do that, you better jump on it. Second thing is, uh, in a month or so, we'll be voting for a church council. There's nomination forms on the back table and the ballot box. So if you think you'd like to run for council or know some of you would be good in council, go ahead and do that. Thanks. She wanted to get in your mind the Ambassadors of Re Reconciliation program, okay? Uh, giving more detail about it. So we're going to run through these slides real quick just to kind of help you understand what this is she's talking about. Okay, so there are many phases of conflict, right? Uh, differences of opinion, simple misunderstandings, tension, jealousy, strife, sin, and thought word need all these things. Oh, Dale, you're keeping us going. It's excellent. It's automatic. Oh my goodness. So a Christian response to conflict is forgiveness and reconciliation, right? So this program, Ambassadors of Reconciliation, is to train you to be a mediator, to help in situations of conflict, to help resolve them. Well, that's a really small type. Um, it's just telling you what, what, they're, what they are. Uh, they're a, a group, an organization that helps train people to deal with conflict and help find reconciliation for for grieved parties and whatever the conflict may be. Oh boy. Um, oh. Yes, it's yeah, January 6th, February 3rd, and I translated the Mountain Time to Pacific. It's from 3 to 5:30. So that's two hours, two an hour and a half, two and a half hours. Focus. Two and a half hours on Monday nights from January to February. Okay, so a bit, of a, a bit of a commitment. There's also a second thing. The second level. There's a second level to it, so you can just be like a, a helpful mediator, but then you can be a, a coach to help reconcile things. Oh my <laughs> word. Um, okay. Yeah, and that just, the notes on that. Okay, so Lutheran Church Canada, that, like we've got a bunch of funding to pay for this program to happen online for us, okay? But you, there's a small fee, less than $100, like Sonia said, for materials. So you have your own copy of the book to go over and have and, and keep and write notes in, right? Oh boy, we're already there. And if you, thanks Dale. And if you want to register, you contact Sonia. That's her email there, and the deadline is December 1st. December 1st deadline. Ambassadors. Yes, sir. Can I just give a preface as to why this is happening? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. So in case you don't know or in case you've forgotten, but back in 2015, there was the crash of the CEF, the Church Extension Fund thing. So if you don't know anything what I'm saying, it's a long story. You can talk to me later about it. But the result of that resulted in a lot of conflict and strife 
um, and confusion and mistrust and all this between congregations, within congregations, um, in the synod as a whole. Um, the RMMC and the people who have been involved with the district that this happened with, so all the congregations in Alberta and British Columbia, have noticed the strife and the problem and have pinpointed that we need something to help um, lead towards for reconciliation, forgiveness, repentance, moving forward. So this is their response. So for our congregation, we were affected by the crash as well. From the vibe, I haven't gotten the feeling that it was quite as dramatic, um, but there are some congregations where this has been a huge, huge struggle for them. And this is trying to support them in that. Um, so if you're wondering why do we need this, that's where it came from and that's what it's for. So maybe that's triggered a memory in your mind of what had happened, um, but yeah. Steps forward, thanks be to God that we can, you know, work towards that reconciliation. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Does, does anybody, like, raise your hand if you know about the church extension fund crash. You're aware of it, maybe? Okay, so not even all of us. That's interesting. Okay, so that's, that's wonderful, but that wasn't, like, a big thing. Some congregations are just so broken still because of this, so thanks be to God. And uh, it wasn't something that got in the way of our, of our faith and our love for one another, family. Okay, so thank you, Marion, for bringing that history. That kind of makes this make sense. Uh, okay, there's no birthdays this week, but we have baptismal birthdays. Wait, where'd they go? Oh, they're right there. It's your baptismal birthday today, Kaylee. Did you know that? Yeah, because you were baptized, so it's your, your birthday of being baptized. And Wyatt, too. Where's Wyatt? Here we are. He's in the back. Okay. So we'll sing for you. We'll sing a happy birthday song, okay? Okay. Happy birthday today. May God bless you always. May he guide you and keep you Sins are forgiven.